Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Doing Business in Bentonville. My name is Andy Wilson, and I'm the executive director, and I am so glad that you're joining us today. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, you can join us on YouTube, Spotify. You can join us on Apple. And, of course, you know, you look at, go to our website, D D B B nwa.com and once you go on our website you can see our podcast there watch it there and then check all of our website out of all the great articles that we're continuing to write about retail the omni channel all of that so uh, again thank you for being here rick west is my guest rick welcome Andy, it is a pleasure. I've been looking forward to this for a while. <laughs> Man, I can't. I have too. You know, yeah. we have known each other a long time. Yeah, and, long. Yeah. and it's so great to have you in the studio today. And a couple of things about Rick. I, of course, I'm going to let him tell you about it, But first of all, he's such a great guy. And, I'm, and you're going you're gonna to hear uh, me talk about that today. And, and he's going to talk about what he does and all that. But before we get into that, we have something else in common. We're both cyclists. Yes, we so, are. So, so yeah. yeah. So, Rick, that's awesome, man. We got We gonna have to ride together. So, I, I think to we it. need to make that happen again. And you were a great coach for me on a ride <laughs> that I, I just recently completed in Little Rock. So, you are. Yeah. You've been a great coach. Well, thank you. Big damn bridge is not a small ride. That's 105 oh. miles. And congratulations on that. Thank you. That's thank awesome. You. Rick West is the CEO of Phil Agent, and he's the co-founder of Phil Agent, and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into many topics today around Omnichannel, about retail, and I've asked Rick even to talk about, uh, as we begin to wrap up a bit on the call, I want to talk about the holiday season, and he's going to talk about that and share some things about that today. And then we have we have gotten many calls and, and people writing us about careers in this type of business we're going to talk a little bit about that we're just going to have a great talk yeah. I'm and, for it. it's been and a great so, conversation. yeah so yeah. rick again welcome thank, thank you. you for being here so tell everyone about you okay so rick west the person i, I like to tell people I'm a, I'm a cross between friday night lights and hillbilly elegy so <laughs> i'm probably the only guest that you've had on is from appalachia <laughs> Well, you I know, up, I think you are. Yeah, I grew up in Eastern Kentucky, so there is hope for folks that are listening to this. Uh, that you can go from Appalachia and become a CEO of a tech company. Uh, but that's my 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 uh, my background, my upbringing. Uh, was blessed to go to uh, a great university, University of Kentucky. Yeah. Okay, University of Kentucky. Uh, but had a very interesting path into Procter and Gamble, and that's really mm. what what helped me understand mm. as a kid from Appalachia that understood relationships, mm -hmm. understood storytelling, uh, what it meant to work hard, be on mm -hmm. time, which is 15 minutes early, all those things mm -hmm. you have from a culture standpoint. Right. But I really didn't understand business. And P&G, as you know, it, it's an amazing training facility. So I had a 17-year career there yeah. uh, that took me th across the United States, uh, three years in Asia, a couple of years in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. a year in Bangkok, uh, and kind of cut my teeth in the business world there. Mm -hmm. But as you know, as you've talked to other folks here, that's a little different than small business and entrepreneurship and technology companies. Right. That's a big machine, but truly understood strategy, processes, how to get things mm -hmm. done, and mm -hmm. just tremendously blessed to have that early on in my career that got me to where I am today. Okay, so how long have you uh, been the, co the co-founder and the CEO with Hill Agent? Yeah, so 20 years, actually 22 years as an entrepreneur. Okay. Okay, I started in 2001. Uh, we launched Field Asia in April of 2010. Now, mm -hmm. that's hard for folks to imagine. That was iPhone 3S, okay? <laughs> it, it was the rage. I mean, and yeah. at that time, it was the rage because everyone had a flip phone. Right. Okay. The business guys had Blackberries, mm -hmm. right? All right. This iPhone thing, because of the exchange, wasn't trusted by corporate America. Right. Uh, and we were sitting around. Uh, it's kind of this the back-end story of how Field Asia got started. We were mm -hmm. sitting around at the table like this using our iPhone 3S's, mm -hmm. trying to figure out to Google to see if anyone was using the phone to do something. Right. Well, at that time, I had a marketing company that was North Star. We had a research company, Core 4 Research. My wife was running that, my wife, Kim. Uh, we had a distribution company, we had products. So we had five LLCs that were running and we were focused on providing solutions to the vendor community here. Mm -hmm. Well, technology really wasn't at play technology, you know, the internet was big, but it really wasn't a technology play. And then the iPhone was there in front of us and it just screamed, how do you use this mm -hmm. to be a solution provider? Long story short, 
we launched in April of 2010, the very first app in iTunes to pay cash. Crazy, yeah. crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And we were able to launch nationwide in every single retail location to start capturing data with an iPhone. Two months before Uber started, mm -hmm. I mean, those were the days. We yeah. Andy, to the point, if I was pitching to you, mm -hmm. and my, from an entrepreneur standpoint, <laughs> I probably spent the first 20 minutes of every pitch explaining to you how to use an iPhone. Right. Corporate America would say, well, Rick, you're using this iPhone. How are you going to train someone to take a photo? Right. Well, Rick, once they take a photo with their phone, how are they going to download it to their computer to send it to you? Mm -mm. I mean, it, it's laughable today. Yeah. It but is. that was the entrepreneurial thing that got mm -hmm. me started. And then from there, we eliminated the other LLCs, right. really started focusing on Field Agent, hence right. becoming the CEO of Field Agent at that time. Okay. So that's well, a long winded story of how I No, it. it's really good because yeah. I remember this. I remember your journey by reading about your journey. I didn't know you then, but I remember about all of this because it was such on the forefront. Yeah. Uh, and so, because uh, there's quite a bit of articles written at that time mm -hmm. ab about. Uh, your company and what you were doing. Okay, now, so we, let's talk Phil Agent. Okay. Okay, um, a great company. Uh, you all just uh, are just what you do, but educate our viewers and, and listeners today who, what, who and what is Phil Agent? Yeah, for the average person that really has no idea what we do, and to yeah. some degree, if you think you know what we do, mm -hmm. uh, we have kind of three verticals of work. And the, the work is primarily around data coming back to a retailer or back to a brand or a CPG mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. And that data crosses three verticals. The first vertical is classic yes and no. We've got 2 million connected shoppers. Mm -hmm. and they're out in retail today in the U.S. and six other countries. Mm -hmm. And if you would ask the question, what is the price of this? Is this in stock? Whatever it may be, mm -hmm. we literally are doing tens of thousands of transactions every single day in near real time mm -hmm. providing that data back. Mm -hmm. So vertical number one, 90% of the folks that have heard of Field Agent get that. Right. The second vertical, once you get scale, Andy, mm -hmm. then the question is, instead of sending Andy and Rick in, what if I sent in a 18 to 35 year old female mm -hmm. and ask, her to capture price at the beauty mm -hmm. shelf mm -hmm. and ask the question what the price is. But more importantly, I now get her perspective on mm -hmm. if something was out of stock, what would she buy? So mm -hmm. that second big vertical is qualitative. Yeah, Hundreds of thousands of people at any given week are providing us qualitative. What did you think about the signage? What did you think yeah. about the out of stock? What would you purchase? What would you do? Right. The third big vertical, mm -hmm. which is really over the last couple of years for us, our, our customers were asking us, gosh, Rick, you have amazing quantitative. I, I love the fact that you can engage with insights, mm -hmm. but do you think someone would buy a product and try a product? Mm -hmm. So now we do sampling. So while she's there, mm -hmm. we said, hey, why don't you buy this product, try it at home, mm -hmm. or buy this product, try it, and actually do a ratings and review. Mm -hmm. And then from there, most recently, it became Omnicom where someone said, instead of going to the store, maybe they can purchase something online, mm -hmm. tell me about their experience, kind of bring that product in, then do a ratings and review. So mm -hmm. that's the very broad scope of what we do, all around providing solutions to problems that people have at retail. Wow, that's exciting. And uh, I, I love that boost on the ground, if you will, yeah. that hands-on, that personal touch. Yeah. Uh, I love that. That's awesome. So uh, again, as you describe your customer, mm -hmm. Just who is your customer? Who who needs this information that you're providing? Well, I'd look left and right. Everybody needs it. <laughs> but, but what happens is, is that because we're, we're probably one of the few companies in the world that can do this at scale, mm -hmm. most people look at this and say, gosh, Rick, what do I do with a thousand photos of a stitched together planogram? Right. And what do I do with 200 video <clears throat> clips of someone engaging mm -hmm. you know, at a store? And so our customers go the breadth of a CPG company, a brand manager, an mm -hmm. operations person mm -hmm. understanding with mm -hmm. signage up, a category captain trying to understand what competition looks like mm -hmm. because their buyer is saying, hey, what's happening in this category? What does the shelf set look like at Whole Foods? Mm -hmm. Well, I could tell you this afternoon, I could be at a couple hundred locations and tell you exactly what the dairy section looks like in Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. So it's that type of engagement. That's probably 70% of who we deal with customer teams or brands that need to have information or insights. Mm -hmm. You then take that and then you get into the retail side. 
very, very similar. Mm -hmm. You've got operations people that are trying to understand, Rick, could you uh, simply audit or do mystery shopping of all of my competitors' direct store delivery? Mm -hmm. Could you do everything for customer pickup? Can you, mm -hmm. can we capture that for them? Right. The next broad you know, group, you got CPG companies and retailers. All right, then we jump into the all other. So it's real estate companies trying to understand what's going on. It is uh, uh, an AT&T store trying to understand their shoppers that mm -hmm. are there. Mm -hmm. A ton of quick serve restaurants, some McDonald's. And yeah. just anyone at retail that's trying to understand what's happening in near real time. But more importantly, mm -hmm. instead of a third party sending in someone like me, mm -hmm. I'm sending in their connected shopper. Right. That's been the epiphany for the folks that we deal with day in and day out. Right. Well, you know, Rick, that... Um, that that is phenomenal, and you know one of the things that we're we're talking about, you know, as you all know, is retail omnichannel, and our purpose at doing business in Bentonville is really to demystify omnichannel. You're you're helping us do that, as you explain this omnichannel experience with people on site, people doing these things for you, and now you know as as retailers look into this this, they need to understand their customer. And you're creating that. Well, think of this, them. Andy, think of your background and the amount of times that you had a piece of data or massive data, the data scientist comes in and said, this mm -hmm. is this. Well, then why? Right. This item's no longer selling. Well, is the item bad? Did mm -hmm. the out of stock? Did the tag come off the shelf? Mm -hmm. I mean, and then I can go in and tell you why. Right. Because I can give you truth at scale to say, Good. oh, yeah. It was a rogue store in Atlanta that lowered the milk price to 99 cents. It wasn't the chain. It right. was a rogue store. Or it was a chain that actually lowered the price of shampoo in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You've got a market problem right. because data doesn't tell you that because right. you have to know the why. So that's yeah. the type of thing they're like, oh, I get yeah. it. You, you marry up with big data to yeah. provide the why. And since mm -hmm. I've got a consumer in there, you always double dip. Right. While I'm capturing data, Ask them what they think. You're like, oh my gosh, right. I didn't have to pay extra for research. Right. I get quantitative yes, no, and I get research. I like it. Blows people's mind. Well, it's awesome. Okay, Rick. Now we're going to move forward, but I I want um, I, as an entrepreneur, as you have said you are, and I know you are. I know that you um, you you probably like most entrepreneurs I know. Okay. When you're not sleeping, which is probably not a lot, you're thinking. Is that correct? It, it's, it's a fair I mean, that, yes, that, it, that is the habit of entrepreneur. Yes. So what I want you to talk to us about, what have you been thinking about? What is the future that you're working on? Now, I want – now, to, for all of our guests that's listening, watching, um, I'm, I think you better buckle up because I think we're going to hear the future of what you're working on. And I think you're going to be really impressed by what Rick's going to share. So, Rick, let's talk about the future. Yeah, I'm going to be careful not to do too many buzzwords because <laughs> everyone rolls their eyes like, really, Rick, another buzzword. Uh, but because of what we do at scale, right? Uh, this little thing called AI has helped us at scale now not only provide a virtual store walk to understand exactly what's happening inside of a store, right? Mm -hmm. I can see what's happening, I can pull data, but now imagine a world where I don't have to look at 500 stores or 1,000 stores. I'm gonna come back to you and say, here are the five new items that have appeared chain-wide at your competitor in the last 30 days. You're like, poof. Ooh. Because with AI, machine learning, I can come in and I can see where new brands pop in. Next thing comes in, someone says, yeah, but I'm trying to understand competitive pricing and I see this price, how long has it been going on with the market? Well, the product that we have in front of us today, and we call it retail pipelines, I can go backwards three months, six months and tell you, it changed August 1st, mm. you're two months late. And you're just like, ooh, mm. I, I can't. So, so that's the, the beauty of what we're doing today because our customers are saying, Rick, thanks for the quantity, Thanks for all the great quality data. And I would argue our data is second to none in quality and scale. But because of that mass amount, they're saying, I just need you to help me provide some analysis and some understanding to help me process through that data. And so with retail pipelines, it is a virtual store walk with answers. It's a virtual store walk with some hypothesis of what we've seen. Mm. It's blowing people's mind that I can sit here today as a 
as a customer team mm -hmm. within the world of Walmart. Right. And they're really trying to understand, tell me what's going on with Target in my category. And I can say, well, let's go look over the last three months and I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. So that's crazy. any item in that category. Any item in the category. Now, what, okay. we, what we don't do is that we don't uh, pretend to be an IRI or a Nielsen with all the people. Right. We're, we're not that, we're okay. not a category captain's best friend. Okay, you're right. Okay. That being said, after you purchase data, even with IRI and Nielsen, now you're coming back in saying, yeah, but for these other retailers that either don't provide data or I'm trying to understand, I need a snapshot. And mm -hmm. so we have hundreds of categories, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Thousands of photos. Mm -hmm. And I now can take category A and tell you over the last year, here's what's going on. And every week I give you an update. Wow. So you literally coming into our platform called Retail Pipelines, mm -hmm. and you're not going in searching photos. You're not flipping mm -hmm. through. You're coming in saying, show me what's going on with pricing. Give me a heat map on what people are looking at here. Wow. Give me a better understanding of what out of stocks look like and show me the new items. It's crazy because most people working with Walmart today would say, well, I've got Retail Link. Mm -hmm. Well, sure you do for your items, and I'm not trying to replace that, nor do I want to get in, engaged in the, the sure. for item. But the moment your buyer asks the question, well, what's going on in this market? Uh, what are you going to do, Andy? Fly to the market? That's, well, that's what we used to do. Okay. Or you're going to call three best friends and <laughs> help right. them take three photos. You're right. Yeah. And so with Field Agent, they would call us, and that provides so much yeah. data that it's just so hard to get through. Well, the buzzword of AI and the machine learning that we have today really allows us to provide a really interesting experience so that you're getting not necessarily all the answers, but you're getting some insights and understanding mm -hmm. as to what's happening at the mm -hmm. category level. It's been really cool to see CPG well, companies look at this. Well, I want to come see it. I, yes, I, I got to come see it. As a retail guy, yeah. I, I would tell you, there's a lot of things in my head going in, through my head right now about this virtual store walk, mm -hmm. and it's called the Retail Pipeline. That's right. And I, I got to tell you, I am interested in seeing the results of this because I've only done a couple of million store walks probably and and to and, and made notes and brought that back to the merchants. Yeah. And said our com competition is doing this, our competition is doing this. And we were the eyes, the ears for them uh, many times uh, and you know operations as we walked yeah. stores, we bring this data back. And I tell and, you, yeah. I said I tell people you should never not do a store walk. I agree with that. But when yeah. you travel from here to Tulsa or you fly to Dallas or you go to Phoenix mm -hmm. and you get, well, wait a minute, I've noticed this happening in the store. Where else can someone tell you this week what's going on in 5,000 locations to tell you is it system-wide? Mm. Is it a test market? We can give you that data in near real time. And that's like, oh my gosh, yeah. I still need to do store visits. But now... I'm trying to understand the Southeast market primarily because my customer, the retailer, Walmart's asking me, mm -hmm. hey, they did a store walk. Right. And they're asking, is this a system-wide problem? Yeah. And you get to see the, the look on their face saying, I, I'll get back to you. Good. And we get that phone call. What we're saying is, what's changed for us, instead of being reactive, what if you were now proactive right and you knew in advance, hey, buyer A, mm -hmm. just so you know, this is going on in the market. I've seen it. I'm on top of it. Change your world, mm -hmm. Andy. You'll change your world. Now, you've got this product launched. Yes. So it's real. It's ready. Right. So it's it's ready. Uh, and we'll make sure that we give you Rick's yeah. contact information and all that. And plus, there'll be an article on our website about this because uh, I want I really want yeah. us to have an article about this because yeah. it's exciting. And um, so so this so, Rick, uh, how long have you You've been working on this. Uh, can you talk about that at all? The, yes. Some of the history, historical yeah. part of this? Primarily started out with our, our partner and another third party uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so this is a North America, it's mm -hmm. minus Mexico, it's, it's a Canada, mm -hmm. US mm -hmm. scenario. My other co founder, Henry Ho, mm -hmm. along with Kelly Miller, another co founder, the two of them, from a tech and business standpoint, mm -hmm. have been working with a partner of ours. It's called Shelfgram. Mm -hmm. And so between the entities we have, and then Henry mm -hmm. and Kelly come alongside, mm -hmm. we have been incubating this for about a year, mm -hmm. and we've really started to drive it over the last three months. So the mm -hmm. good news is, based on the category we're looking at, mm -hmm. and not every category, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've got a year's worth of data in quite a few categories. Wow. And That's so cool. when you get into household cleaning, mm -hmm. as an example, yeah. and you really want to understand what's changed over the last year, yeah. I, I can tell you that from a virtual standpoint and give you some great mm -hmm. data. 
Now, what's interesting is that a year or so ago when people talked about chat GPT, that's mm -hmm. not what I'm talking about as it relates to AI. Right. You can play with that. I'm talking about true image recognition and artificial intelligence that helps you make good business decisions. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to help you write something better or mm -hmm. to kind of play and make a really cool little piece of text come back. Mm -hmm. This is really being able to understand at scale mm -hmm. to bring insights back to you. And that's the secret sauce that we have today. Wow. It's been really cool. It sounds exciting. Yeah. Um, it's, it does it, it does sound so uh, the future because it, of the- it is. Uh, so because of the information it can bring so quickly to you to make great decisions at scale at scale and you know and that's that's one of the things we as leaders and as uh leaders of of our companies and organizations decision making is critical but the right decision making is is even more critical mm -hmm. and what you're going to do is provide that data to help them help your customers make much better decisions in a proactive yeah. way at yeah. scale if, yeah. if, 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 if folks that's, listening remember yeah. nothing else is that good Instead of reacting, mm -hmm. what if I told you there was a way for me to help you proactively understand yeah. at scale? Right. I'm telling you, it'll change your morning on a Monday morning <laughs> when you get that email. <laughs> and you're like, I already have, already know, yeah, I know exactly what's going on. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Rick, that's exciting. Now uh, we may come back to this a bit, uh, but I want to, I want to, I want to pick your brain on a couple other things, uh, if we could. Uh, let's let's talk about. Let's talk about retail business for holiday. Uh -huh. Okay, I mean the holidays are fast approaching. Uh, Thanksgiving is all along the way. Uh, Christmas is extremely close. So as you look at the landscape, right. as you uh, with your knowledge of the market and retail, give us some thoughts about the holiday season. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to uh, bore people with the blog that we just pushed out about the holiday season because we're going to put the link in and make you read it. <laughs> Listen, my marketing team's already excited the fact that we're going to push the blog. Yeah. But but I can tell you this, my our business, we, we are a B2B business, right? So we don't sell to consumers. Mm -hmm. we, we sell to and we engage mm -hmm. B2B. So again, CPG companies, brands, and retailers, well, they all have B2B. C, C business. Right. And so we yeah. look at our business and I engage my clients, what they're telling me, and this is just anecdotally, right. I didn't survey 50 customers to right. figure this out. Right. But anecdotally, no one's seeing shoppers go to zero. Mm -hmm. No one's seeing people saying, I'm going to just hold back and do nothing. Mm -hmm. But the size of drink, I think is going to continue. You're going to kind of feel that go down a bit. Okay. So instead of buying four, maybe you bought three. Instead of spending X, maybe I trade down just a mm -hmm. just a bit. So what I'm seeing at retail isn't excitement and engaging and in stores and online. Mm -hmm. And you and I have seen this in Thule because retailers are going earlier and mm -hmm. you're already doing Black Friday oh, early yeah. before. You know, because you want to get the dollar soon. Yeah. Because it's not that you're going to go to zero. People are going to engage. You need to get the dollar sooner. Mm -hmm. And everyone is repeating the exact same mm -hmm. thing. Rick, you got to get the dollar soon. People feel a little bit uneasy. Therefore, mm -hmm. the drink may not be as you know right. large as, as I had before. Mm -hmm. So I think for some of the premium brands out there, the, you have to be earlier than usual yeah, right if you're going to get that right. you know, thing mm -hmm. in your cart to, to, to make that work right. so we're sensing that and i think the other thing is we look at shoppers they're fairly positive but i think you'll start seeing a sentiment when you read the blog there's some caution mm -hmm. i don't think there's any panic right you know, the sky isn't falling even though we did the survey before you know the war broke out October 7th before that right. happened. Mm -hmm. Since it might be a little bit different today. Right. But I think there's a bit of caution in the air. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's going to have some impact to retail sales. And listen, you follow retail and mm -hmm. earnings forecasts. Mm -hmm. And it's not that people are saying it's going to go to zero, but right. instead of a 4%, maybe it's three. It's right. three and a half, maybe it's two and a half. So it's slightly lower fourth quarter expectations mm -hmm. for what I can tell. Well, I think you described it very well. I know the research I've read uh, most recently about it, it is, it is. I mean, I think you said it very, very well. I think it's smaller drink. That's a great way to describe what I have read, you know, two to 3%, three to 4%, somewhere in that range. And I think that, you know, National Retail Federation saw it, and I've read an article recently, uh, last week, I think about that. But, but I think the other thing you said is very important. Uh, that you need to be soon, you need to be fast out there, 
because I think once that dollar is spent, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to go again. It's going to, so you've got to be quick. And that's why we're already seeing ads and Black Fridays and all of these things right now. Right. So I guess the word to, to the retailers is uh, I hope you're not behind. You need to be out there. It, you have to be out there. Now, the, yeah. the good news for us, if I did this, look back at the same blog post that we did mm-hmm. in 2020, 21, 22, we don't have the inventory issue. That whole scarcity mentality that mm-hmm. people were really stressed out and scared, yeah. we don't have that now. So there's a little bit of relaxation. So you don't have the folks saying, mm-hmm. gosh, if I don't buy it now, it's not going to be available. So because that, it's going to be maybe closer to normal, but there's mm-hmm. still that you got to get in there early. Yeah. I've noticed that in a couple of store walks I have done recently uh, that that what we had before, you know, you couldn't get it, so we just bought everything because right. you didn't know you were going to get it, and and uh, you didn't know if the boat was going to get here. But, right. And so, uh, but what I've seen that too, I think you bring out a very good point. I have seen inventories much better managed positions so. that I you know, than we've seen a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. and it, it, again, the, because mm-hmm. you're in this space, you, you mm-hmm. all the folks listening to this understand it. Uh, gone are the days that. A retailer will say, "Well, I'll wait three or four weeks to get for you to get back in stock." Yeah. All right. Listen, yeah. that shelf tag's moving. Yeah. <laughs> Two facings became three. I mean, yeah. Those days are over now. Yeah. A year or so ago, it was new news to everyone. But yeah, there's a new reality out there that says there will be full shelves. Right. It may not be the way the planogram was set up. Right. But there will be full shelves. Right. So because of that, I think retailers have realized. Mm-hmm. There's a way for mm-hmm. them to offset the out of stock mm-hmm. issue with getting some purchases as opposed mm-hmm. to people leaving, going to another retailer mm-hmm. that might be in stock. Right. So the perception of things being full is there. Right. But again, with retail pipelines, plug for what we're doing. You're right. I can now show yeah. you where things have transitioned, where you yeah. thought you had three facings and yeah. you went to zero because of inventory of the tag mm-hmm. is down. And you're like, oh my gosh, I had yeah. no idea that was going on. Right. Okay, I like that. I like the. I like your title, retail pipeline. That's a great. That that's just a great yeah. title for this. Yeah. This is, okay. Now, so thanks for for us talking about the holiday season. Now, one of the things we get, Rick, we we get. You know, of course, we're in the middle of Northwest Arkansas. You know, University of Arkansas, Sandball School of Business, all of that. Walmart, JB Hunt, Tyson Foods, all of that here. And one of the things that we're, we're constantly uh, wor- working with and on is careers and jobs, especially for the, for the young men and women that are coming up. And, you know, we see so much going on in the retail space, the supply chain, logistics space, all the technology space. Right. So as you step back a bit and you look at your company and you look at the future, wh- where, where do you see the jobs? Okay, the, the, there's two ways to answer this. And the, the first one is an old school way, and this is just the way Rick looks at life here. <laughs> okay. um, I think that a successful career still follows the road and path of relationships. When I talk to college students and even young professionals today, I said, you're naive to think that you're going to get this job or the next job without having a relationship. So the whole networking concept Hey, I'm great. I do really great work. Look at my resume. Why am I not getting hired? Well, because three people over here have relationships in their gates. So number one, you've got to be engaged. So I would go to a doing business in Bentonville event as an example. Would mm-hmm. just just be very practical and have those relationships because that's the phone call you want. Number mm-hmm. one. The second piece is you look at where jobs are going. It's not that you have to be a data scientist, but you have to be able to consume knowledge. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to consume data and be able to understand and come up with insights or some form of analytics. And it's not just a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. It's being able to read mm-hmm. and consume. So as I look at people coming in and we interview them, a question that we always ask is, you know, are you reading a book right now? Mm-hmm. And you'll get two different answers, Andy. <laughs> answer A is, yeah, I was read, read one for class. And mm-hmm. okay, great. The other answer is, well, i knocked out 20 or 30 over the last eight months. I've got one on my backpack and one on the, yeah. Yeah. if that person is a reader, mm-hmm. I know they can consume information. So I think the new work in front of us is technology driven. But even if you talk to um, our CTO, Kelly Miller, about the people he's hiring, it's one thing they have technical aptitude, but if you're really a programmer or developer, you have to understand architecture. You have to be able to sit down across from a user and really 
understand user needs and be able to really understand what's happening mm -hmm. as opposed to tell me what to code. Mm -hmm. And I think as students and young folks are coming in as I'm great doing this, the interpersonal part of engaging mm -hmm. is really, really important. So I think data-driven technology type of roles doesn't have to be a coder. Mm -hmm. It could be an analyst. It could be mm -hmm. in the category aspect of it, or simply could be I'm a content writer. Mm -hmm. And I can receive content and I can engage my CEO and I can push out content for the marketing. It's all driven by the same thing. Content reading and processing is really, really important. Mm, good. Great advice. Mm. Great advice uh, for our young leaders out mm. there. And um, wonderful. Now, Rick, wow, I, our time has flown by. I, I really... I, I, I think you guys got to come back. I'd love and, to. Come back. And uh, because there's so much more I want to ask you. And I just looked at the, wow, this has been fast. Okay, so Rick, let's do a quick recap, okay? Because I think it, uh, I think it's so important. So um, we'll make sure people know how to get a hold of your company and uh, who they need to get hold get a hold of to learn about this new latest product called the Retail Pipeline, mm -hmm. a virtual store walk. Correct. Uh, and uh, uh, so, Rick, as as we wrap up, and we, as we've talked a lot about uh, about retail, about Omni Channel Day, and and the holiday season, any closing comments? Yeah, I, I think as as people are looking at this space, especially if you are if you're listening to this podcast, obviously you're wanting to learn, you're wanting to, to get better. I go back to that relationship piece and to, to look at what's happening. There's still significant changes and exciting things happening in front of us, don't sit on the sideline. You can't. Right. Yeah. You you can't be the guy that just do your, does your job. Right. You, you've got to get out there and it, you don't have to be the AI person, but you have to understand it to understand how it's going to impact your job and, and what that means. So that, that's number one. You've got to get out there and engage, get, do networking and, and make that happen. I think the second thing is Doing good work today is is important, and, and I don't want to bust on the whole do you work, mm -hmm. you know, on site or work virtually, but take advantage of engaging those that are your managers and those that are that are you kind of reporting to, and engage them and find out within your industry where they think something's going. Mm -hmm. It's the whole Gretzky go where the puck isn't. Mm -hmm. I, I can speak in my very very you know narrow channel here. So whether you're an experienced person or not, you've got these great thought leaders that are all around you. Mm -hmm. You've got to network them and understand where it's going to go because that's going to be your next job. Mm -hmm. It's totally going to be your next job. And if you think you could just sit there and figure this out on your own, you're, you're kind of naive. And so those are two practical things I think sure. is really important. Last piece is that if I can pontificate a little bit here, last piece, don't be afraid of technology. So this whole retail pipelines thing that we're talking about, th there, there's a, a host of folks that are like, Rick, I'm, I'm just going to go out and do the store walk. I just feel better about that. Don't be afraid of this technology really enabling you to do the things mm -hmm. that you're doing, because I always think it's and not or. Mm -hmm. I want you to go. You, you can't go to a buyer and say, I haven't been to a store in a year. That's ridiculous. But what you can't say also is I've been to the same store, 359 in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we allow that scale and engagement mm -hmm. to get out there. So don't let technology mm. uh, make you a bit afraid. D mm. Take it on, use it. Good. You know, uh, Sam Walton had a great way of put this in perspective. He would, he would, I was, a, I was actually a buyer at one time at Walmart too, as, as I was coming up into the company. Mm -hmm. uh, but he would tell us, he would require us to go out to the stores and he would, he, we called it eat what you cook. Yeah. In other words, we bought it. We cooked it. We got to go out and check it now right. and see how if we did well, if we how well we did based on the customer mm -hmm. and uh, the associate in the area. But what Rick is great advice. Mm -hmm. You you you've got to you you've got to do both today. You, to. you know, and so uh, my friend Rick West. Wow, what a great time with you. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, you've done well. I'm glad you're in Arkansas, not Kentucky. We're glad to have your Appreciate talents that. here. Okay, everyone, again, thank you all so, so much today for watching and listening. Uh, you can always, again, check us out, doing business in Bentonville.com, uh, and you'll you'll see all that we do. Uh, we do focus on this topic, and you've, you've heard it today. Rick, again, 
thank you. Thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure to spend time with you. And let's come back. You need to come back and let's talk about this next future thing that you probably have up your sleeve somewhere. Okay. It's, it's oh, I look forward to next time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you everyone for joining today. It's been a pleasure, Rick. Again, thank you. Goodbye, everyone.